Hi everyone, I am Jesse Happy and you are watching Kalakar Makerspace videos. It's been 45 days since I released any video and it's because I have a new CNC machine and I've been tinkering with it a lot. I'll talk about it later in some other video. But in today's video, we're going to convert this wooden log into a wall clock. This wood is actually fig and because it's a light wood, there are a lot of cracks that has happened over the period of time. So first I need to seal it, otherwise it will simply disintegrate. To do that, I have this epoxy which we sell at our marketplace and the link is in the description so you can go and buy these to use here. These are clear resins and it cures in about 6 hours of time and during the cold periods it takes about 8 hours because now it's summer it just takes 6 hours. Some of these cracks like this one has an opening here so I just can't pour the epoxy. So I'm going to use some hot glue, seal this first and then I will be able to pour the epoxy and seal everything. And because this looks like a porous wood, I haven't worked with fig before, so it might suck in a lot of epoxy. This gap is big, so I don't know how it's going to work, but I'll just try bridging it like that. <laughs> Making some bridges first, and then probably I'll be able to pour over it. Oh, that works. Okay, so that didn't go well because it's really hot here in India. It's taking a lot of time for it to actually cure and that makes the hot glue just sag inside the crevices. So if it was cold, I tried hitting it with the air compressor, still it is not working. If it was cold, maybe it would have worked. So before it solidifies and makes my job even more harder, I'm just going to use this knife carefully super sharp to just take out the rest of it so that I don't have to clean it later. The one on the outside is kind of easily coming out but the hot glue on the inside is difficult. Okay, I was able to salvage most of it, in fact all of it. So I will put some plastic tape. The reason that I didn't go for this method in the beginning is this resin is not a fast setting one so there are going to be some gaps over here and if i pour resin it will definitely definitely 100 percent ooze throughout and i know this from my experience and that's the reason i did not use it but i think there's no other choice some people suggest using clay sealing the backside, but i just don't have any clay so here it is and i'll put some hot glue i don't know if the hot glue is very hot enough that it is going to melt the packaging tape but I'll seal the packaging tape at the perimeter like this. That would stop the resin from escaping. Lots and lots of hot glue. Ah. I hope this works. So let me let it dry for some time and then I will be able to flip it. This one worked out well. It's sealed properly. I'm able to see a change in color. Here it is light and here it is dark because it's touching directly the wood. Now I can go ahead and pour the resin. Once you start adding the hardener, you will not see any clarity. It will become a milky solution. But as you keep mixing more and more, and it becomes a homogeneous mixture, it clears out. And that's the sign that it has been mixed really good. Make sure, even if it's a small quantity, make sure that you mix the sides well, and that will give you a good result. This is exactly why you need a plastic cover at the bottom because it's definitely bound to overflow. By the way, this is not happening because there is a leakage at the bottom. This is happening because it flowed over the top. There is some solution at the bottom but absolutely nothing till the top. I think I have to mix more mixture and start pouring in because it's just sucking up everything. Now I can't even lift the wooden piece to see if it is leaking at the bottom because if it is, it is. The second batch that I mixed, I have added a lot more quantity because I am going to cover this entire surface with epoxy 
and you can see a lot of cracks here and there. I have sealed almost all those parts with the cello tape at the bottom and I will go and try to just pour it everywhere and because it's a slow setting one it's going to be in a liquid form for a long time and I hope that will start seeping into all these cracks. I can actually touch it, it is completely cured, here the overspill and everything is still malleable but nothing is sticking and this happened just in less than 4 hours, I think it is just 2 hours and it has got perfectly glued to the back. People say that I should take my time in doing things but it is ok if I rush through it because this is not going to be the first layer and the last layer that I pour on this after I face the surface I am going to pour more epoxy. So now that that side is sealed it forms a bottom for this wooden log that I can now pour more resin on this side and cover this up also. Here you can see how much of resin it has taken and this is actually beneath the cellophane tape. Cool then so I will mix some more resin and we will pour here. All the surface is just plastic uh, cellophane tape that I put and it is smooth and it is taken a lot of material. Now I can pour the resin on here and I have again mixed a huge quantity. Uh, this wood is really dark, usually while trying to coat even surfaces you will use a spatula but right now my finger is my spatula because its surface is so uneven and I want the resin to reach each and every nook and corner so that it can cure. So, I am going to push the resin inside the cracks using my finger and coat every little surface. I feel that this surface is coated even more better because it is a flat surface than the other side. Now, I will let the wood cure and start sucking in all the resin for the entire night and then tomorrow I will come and start facing the surface. I am already seeing a lot of bubbles here which is a good sign. Now I can mount this piece to my CNC table and start planing the surface. I am going to hold it just by two sides and slowly plane it and for that I am using this 30 mm dia wood router which was a bit mistake. I will show you why it was a mistake later. I am taking only about 2 mm of material each time with the pass and I am moving the router manually with the remote. You can see that the surface is really really nice and the wood router did a really good job but the problem was with actually with the shank. The shank is too thin for this kind of a job and this bit was supposed to be used with a router, a handheld router but I put it on the CNC machine because of which it actually bent and uh, it could have been a very bad accident but somehow I stopped it and here is the bit after it bent. Now I started using this 10 mm aluminum bit and this is a 4 float one and since aluminum is a harder material uh, using this bit with wood is of no problem. It just took a lot of time but the surface finish was really really nice. Once I finished planing one side of the piece, this is how it looks. I flipped the piece and started planing the other side. And this is important to do so that you do not have to later suffer with surface finishes and everything. I mean, since I do not have a planer, the CNC worked out really really good to me. One important point to note is you have to think of the final thickness of your material. For example, see here the thickness is just about an inch and I started almost 1.75 inches thick and that is because when you keep on removing materials this happens and finally I was able to sand the entire surface, remove all the tool marks and finish it with the linseed oil. The linseed oil really brought out the colors and I love how it looks. Finally, I can attach this hardware at the back 
which will help me hang the clock on the wall it's just a keyhole hardware and for that i have to drill a small hole so that the there is some space for the screw to go after expanding the holes i just pre-drilled for the screws and i used some wood screws and tightened the hardware to the back if you can see i've already made a small hole for the clock mechanism to go in and after doing that i can go and buff the entire clock mechanism and i'm going for a matte look so i just buffed it really light to bring out the grains of the wood after this you can see how good the grains are and how smooth the surface is and all thanks to the cnc machine the clock movement just fits inside the socket just like that and i can tighten it with the nut given the nut just goes on top so when when you make a pocket make sure what is the length of your clock movement and how much you have to leave the thickness that is something that i calculated and i did it with the cnc machine the clock handles just go by just a press fit you can just push it into the place and that would sort it out to set the time just keep the minutes and hours in the same direction and that means it's at 12 o'clock and from there you can dial in from the back of the clock to make it work by adding the battery you can see the seconds needle starts ticking in and i'm so happy about this project if you loved and enjoyed the process of making this clock then please do let me know in the comments and also give some love by clicking on the like button i'm going to attach a playlist of all the epoxy projects i've done here so please go ahead and check that and if you're new to this channel plan please subscribe as well if you want to know what i'm doing right now then please follow me on instagram the instagram link is given in the description hope to see you in the next video until next time happy learning